Well, <clears throat> if you watched our last video, then you already know what happened with this. Well, a pin broke off the power board into the ARGB right there. So I promised you in that video that uh, we were gonna have Phil repair this, but uh, I figured before I go ahead and pull out the power board and stuff, we'll show you what other little 3D print modifications we came up with. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So here's the screen, which I've already told you is gonna go on here because I've gotten so used to the center panel. If you don't know, know what I mean by center panel, it just means a small Raspberry Pi screen or something that's always showing temperatures, voltages, um, FPS, all that stuff. We did a whole video about how to set that up. Um, I told Nick, I was like, hey, see if you can come up with a bracket. So this is what he came up with. This is 3D printed. Uh, this is using our Ender 5. And he came up with this bracket here which screws right into the back of the screen where the Raspberry Pi would normally go. Um, one of the holes doesn't line up. I have to either open it up or whatever. I got three points of contact here, so it's fine. This lines up with our bracket right here. So, and then here's the J2Sense logo that he printed to fill in the hole. And I spray painted it black, and then I put matte um, clear on there to give it a little bit of a sheen without being too shiny like PLA is to more even out the shine. It's literally just taped on the back right now. And then he's utilizing these two holes for the bracket which will go right here in front of the graphics card, which is vertically mounted right there. So once all of this is in here, this is where the screen will go with the bezel. And then it actually looks really good. And then the graphics card takes up a lot of this space right here. But none of that matters because, you know, today I'd be bending tubes and stuff if I hadn't broken one of the pins off of the ARGB in for the power board. So what I gotta do now is I gotta unplug all of the plugs, which I spent a lot of time yesterday doing. The upper radiator has to come off because I have to access these plugs right here. Fortunately, it looks like Singularity thought of this and pulling out the power board comes out from the backside and not from the front. So let me go ahead and just start taking this all apart. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna let Phil with his little soldering station right there. He is going to show how to basically flow solder and pass through pins, but we're gonna be, we got this here, which Singularity had sent us, which is just an ARGB distribution board. So you've got one ARGB in. He's gonna use this as a practice board. They sent us a bunch of these. So it's got the same exact deal that we're dealing with here to replace on that PCB. So this is perfect for practicing. We got a few different methods we can go with to try and repair this, whether we're gonna replace all three pins, just the broken one. We'll talk about that when we get to that point, but none of that matters until I get all of this unhooked. So this is the power board. It's just a distribution block for power. Um, these are our ARGB out, and then that's an in. So like we already showed in our last video, this one and this one have to be supplied ARGB signal. Otherwise, only these will work. Oh no, only these will work with that one. I don't remember exactly how the board split. The, regardless, I broke an in right here. You can see there's a pin missing. But here's what's funny about this. You see these, these pieces here that are soldered onto the PCB? They're exactly the same as these ones that we got, I got on Amazon, actually, which are designed to just work as like a, a connector to put two together, like two, two plugs together, or uh, cables, I should say. So they're exactly the same. This is where it's gonna be more of a, a, the interesting part of the video, where it's less about, you know, me talking and stuff. We're just gonna push the camera in on tripod close to his helping hands so that you can kind of see the way he's doing this. Phil's got a lot of experience with soldering his drones. He's built a lot of drones from scratch and he's had to make some very tiny repairs, like super tiny, um, much smaller than this. So we feel pretty confident this will be an easy repair because this is on the edge of the board. We'll just get the camera set up. I'll let Phil get comfortable with how he wants to do it. And uh, he's got practice and then we've got kind of like one shot at this. Yeah, one shot, one opportunity. We're gonna stop before I get demonetized.
In editing, you should add dramatic music here. Come on. There you go. Nice. Look at that. Cool. So you don't want so much solder that they bridge because- Right, because then that's bad. <laughs> that's nice. That's pretty. It's just like- See what it, I was talking about? Dude, it doesn't even go out of the circle. <laughs> Yesterday, Jane was wondering like, how do you get the solder in the exact spot? And I was like, that's the crazy thing is like, it's just- Service like tension. tension, it pulls it in, huh? You were saying the solder wants to go where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. So that means the solder wanted to go all over the PCB when I was soldering. <laughs> it wanted to, it's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't do it, it did it. <laughs> on the one underneath that, I wanna clip the plastic where the one is and see if you can do just one pin. That's, that's what, all we Honestly, need. that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah, there's no reason to replace all three. Yeah, and it is harder because of the fact that this iron, the iron- It's just, it's, it's too short. Yeah. It, I mean, that's the problem you can see me running into right now. Is yeah, because you can't push it all the way through if one side is solid still. Yep. Yeah, so we, I just tripped the, trimmed the plastic right there, which completely wrecked the pin, but that's fine. We just need to get it out to kind of recreate the situation that we're in now on the power board. And then what Phil can do is reflow that hole. Uh, <laughs> there's so many puns and innuendos in this video. You can reflow that hole and then push one pin in, which will be, because you can see it's too awkward to try and do all three. See how he just pulled out one? See how easy that was versus before? Yep. All right, so now you're just gonna heat the backside and push it through, and that should theoretically be super easy and fast. Almost, okay. It's in, so at least now. Well, let me. There it goes. See it moving. All right, there. Okay. There Ooh, it fits tight. Yeah. Hold can you show the back of the PCB so that you yeah. can see that it's not like bridging back there? Yeah, it's gonna take z literally zero force. It's just you gotta, you gotta get the heat rate. Oh, I see it moving. It's loose. Nice. Let's see, let me, let me look at how you're applying the heat. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. You got it. There we go. Nice. Now, oh, that's a perfect, that's a nice little circle there if I don't say so myself. That surface tension's awesome. That's a nice little circle right there. <laughs> Is that the best solder ball? <laughs> I, I've ball I have done? never, my balls have never looked this good. <laughs> <laughs> that was tricky because the iron is also in the way of the pin. So it's a little weird to finagle it in there. Nice. Holy poop. <laughs> Hold on, did I do a thing? Wait, With Lewis Rossman? You, you just shove it in there. I soldered uh, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> the whole thing flew out. How broken did you break that? You, you broke it at the- <laughs> I broke it into the thing and then off the PCB. I mean, sorry Singularity for desecrating your beautiful power board. Well, that was built by a machine. <laughs> So I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but put the pin in this plug, so that way it's gonna align itself. Sick. Oh my God, I'm the best solderer ever. And then, <laughs> fixed. <laughs> One repaired power board later, and uh, heck, except for the pin being a slightly different shade of brass or bronze or whatever, like you can't even tell, looks good. Should work, there's no reason why it shouldn't. So I'm going to get my RGB cable here ready to go. I had to use an extension, which sucks, so it's really long because the ones that came with the power board are too short. <laughs> so that's the problem with motherboards is like they don't put the headers in the same spots. So whatever. Um, so we'll do this back in B-roll fashion, put the power board all back together. I have a decision to make because I also want to point out I did turn off the uh, LED lighting on the power board. There's a toggle switch right there. And I switched it to off because these LEDs are non-diffused. See, all these white squares are LEDs and they shine straight out. I didn't, I didn't like the way that looked. I really didn't. So I, decide, I opted to turn it off. And uh, fan-wise, yesterday, ironically, I, I broke this and then I had to wait to fix it to today. The fans that I said have the side lighting the black ones are, they came in. So now I have to decide, do I want the illuminated blades or do I want the illuminated sides? So this would all be blacked out and then lights up on the side. And I'll be honest, I almost 
feel inclined to switch it. <laughs> and yesterday Phil was like, you're not switching those fans, those look dope. <laughs> it's like, maybe I will, I don't know. You know what's gonna happen is the moment you finish this build, they're gonna come out with one that has both side and front lighting. <laughs> Actually, I can't talk about it. You know what, I would use these if I were running the, um, the control box that comes with Lee and Lee. Since I'm gonna be running Asus Aura because I'm using the adapter, I'm not gonna use these. I'm gonna leave the radiators and stuff as they are. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch back to B-roll mode. I'm gonna put the system back together. This actually gives me an opportunity to fix some routing of some stuff now that I have more access to it because of, look at that. I'm gonna B-roll this back together. And then if all goes well, we should be ending the video with another boot without a loop hooked up to this. I'm just gonna push power, see if all the lights turn on. If they do, I'm gonna power switch it off with the power supply. And then uh, all that'll be left to do is tubing. Don't break anything, idiot. Check it out, it's all back together, including the screen bezel with the screen mounted in its spot right there. Uh, one thing I didn't show you, Nick printed the little wedge thing we wanted in here. So that's just giving stability to the entire thing. Look, it doesn't wobble now. It's funny, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with Singularity saying the feet design is fine. Um, yeah. They designed it, but that, that, just, that just needs to change, I'm sorry. So, I don't wanna hook a water loop back up to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to be blowing air into my GPU block, or CPU block. Because believe it or not, that will actually provide some cooling. <laughs> okay. Hey, look at that. 59. Okay, so Phil said this strip right here didn't light up. That's fine, that's easy to fix. Uh, I just gotta figure out where it is. It probably came unplugged. I may not have even plugged it in. But anyway, there you go. Um, gosh, we are close. Now all I have to do is figure out why the front isn't lighting up. And you know what, if it doesn't light up, that sucks. But um, wait, does the top one light up? Yeah, top one I wanna see it again, okay. All right, well that didn't work. <laughs> so, it works, we got video, we got CPU, we got post, we got almost all of our RGB lighting up. I, I think I might have actually just forgotten to plug that one in, I'm not sure. But that's fine, that's an easy fix. Um, I'll deal with that next. Next video, tubing, filling it up, and then reading all your jokes about how every build of mine takes a year. I know, I know, hey, look. If I continue to meet expectations, should you be surprised? And if the expectation is that it takes me forever to build a PC that's mediocre, should you be surprised? I don't know, you're gonna give me your opinion anyway down below, so go ahead. If you're gonna rip me a new one, at least be subscribed. Have some decency. Like be like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this guy what a slow, crappy builder he is, but I'm gonna be subscribed, that way I know when he puts a video live so I can say it in every video. That's what real shockers would do.